Hello everyone and welcome to the Trinity Stamps YouTube channel. My name is Kelly Kahoot and I am so excited to have been asked to create a card for the Trinity Stamps fifth birthday celebration. All these products can be found at trinitystamps.com and are available now. Okay, so let's take a walkthrough of all the products that I'm going to use today. This is the Party Pirates Stamps and Coordinating Dies. So cute with the little boys and girls and the pirates and the birds and the octopus. What a cute little scene I'm going to make with this. There's also the Wavy Lines background stamp. I'm going to create a watery scene. And then the Slimline series stitched edition of those awesome Slimline dies. I'm going to use that scalloped background and also the cloudy border, as you can see there with that white scrap piece of paper. I'm going to use that cloudy border die to create a mask or a stencil. I'm going to stencil on or brush on some ink with this handy dandy Trinity Stamps blending brush and some broken china oxide ink. So you can see that I have trimmed out that cloudy border. Now you could use either side, either the positive or the negative. Here I have both of them held up here. It just depends on the way or the direction that you want your big fluffy clouds to kind of flow through the sky. So I'm going to use the puffy side, which is what I'm going to call the positive side or what we would normally or typically use on our cards. You can see that cute little stitched edge there. And because this is a long slimline die size for those nice long cards, I'm going to be able to shift this scrap piece of paper from side to side to get the different looks of clouds in the sky. So they're not all gonna look the same. So this is just one more way to kind of stretch the use of our dies, use it for a different purpose than what they were intended for. And I am loving this little Trinity Stamps blending brush. It, the bristles are so super smooth and you can see the nice hazy clouds that I'm getting in the background there with that broken china blue ink. I can pick up some more ink off of my little stencil mat and just keep working it over here, tilting that cloudy bordered paper from side to side, and I can tip it this way and that to make sure all the clouds in the background, I have good variation, uh, some are tipped to the left and some are tipped to the right, and I just keep working that little um, stencil or mask up and down that sheet of slimline paper that I've cut um, to get a great cloudy background. Okay, so now I'm going to work with that wavy lines background stamp. So this is a large six by six inch stamp. I have another sheet of that scalloped or the scalloped die that I've used to cut a white sheet of paper. And next we're gonna do a layer that's gonna be used as the water in our scene. So I am using some anti-static powder, VersaFine sticky or watermark ink, and I'm gonna cover that watermark ink or embossing ink all over that background stamp. And then I want to press really hard to make sure that I get all of those cute little wavy lines onto that piece of paper. That way I can pour clear embossing po uh, powder over the top. What the clear embossing powder is going to do is it is going to trap or kind of seal in the white paper that's underneath. It's going to give me a glossy area. And once I get this all covered and heat set so it's nice and smooth, I can then take a different color of oxide ink and go over to the top. So this is a Mermaid Lagoon, which fits our watery pirate scene perfectly. Again, I'm going to use one of those cute little blending brushes to blend on, starting darker towards the bottom of that piece of paper, and then letting that Mermaid Lagoon color fade out as we go up near the top. Now, I don't need to make sure that all of this uh, background sheet of paper or that white sheet of paper has good coverage because I'm going to trim this down to go on to the scene of our card. But I wanted all of that cute little scalloped and stitched design to be all the way around the edges of every layer of this card. 
I spritzed that oxide ink with some water and blotted it up and then my wavy line background is all ready to go. Okay, using that Slimline Series stitched die set again, I'm gonna cut out a piece of craft paper. You can see again, I have used that scalloped uh, edge die to cut out the craft paper. And this is going to be a little island or the sand at the bottom of the ocean. You can see I've used that little simple stitched edge to get the little hillside there. And the same thing, you can do a couple of different things with that die set. You can see on the far left where I've cut what looks like a grassy border. I think with some white ink or something like that, that would be really cute as splashing waves. Or you can use just the straight stitched edge. Now I'm prepping these stamps because this is the first time that I've used them. I've got a scrap piece of white paper. You can see it's that negative piece from the cloudy border that I used. I've got all those set into the Misty and I'm gonna use some Memento Tuxedo Black ink because we're gonna do some simple Copic coloring today. Now I always like to heat set my ink that way I don't run the risk of smearing that black ink into the design when I start to use my Copic markers. Okay, instead of going through a lot of details on how I color each item, I mainly want to talk about the colors that I choose and how you can get a really good look and have your colors kind of blend together and go well with one another uh, using the same colors throughout the card. So anything that is brown or done in woods like the ship here or the masts and the posts that are on the ship are gonna be all used in the same colors of browns. And the colors that you choose don't really matter as much as just making sure that you carry those colors throughout the whole design of your card. So anything brown is gonna be done with whatever colors that you start out with. Now I did start out with a lighter color brown and I'm gonna go in with, um, a lighter color, a medium color, and a dark, and do some very messy little flicks and things here and there just to get the look of a wood grain across this ship. You can add some shadows in under the windows and under the ledges, like around the edge of the ship, and pretty easy peasy. This is easy to achieve because it doesn't require anything fancy. Just some basic little shadow lines there, and then just flick on color here and there on those boards to get the look of lights and darks and little places in the wood grain. Okay, I am moving on to red. And so I just happen to have an R27 and I like to do very, very simple Copic coloring. So I will color the whole image in and then add, a, add my shadows and darkness with the same color just by flicking over the same areas again and again. Now I mentioned earlier that I was gonna tell you and talk to you about um, using color on your card. So anywhere that I am going to use reds, I'm going to use the same color marker, but I'm going to spread that color out throughout the card. So I'm going to use it on the flags or the uh, masts of the ship. I'm going to use it in the little pirate's clothing. I'm going to use it in the bird, all the same shade of red. And that kind of helps tie the whole look and the whole design of the card together. So I'm going to finish up the flags and the mass of the ship and the cute little red balloon, and then we're going to move on. Okay, keeping with our party theme, I'm moving on with a blue, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna use the same color throughout. So you can see the blue is used on the balloon. It's also used in the right-handed pirate's clothing. And then I'm also going to use that color in the fish and in the octopus. So it is spreading that same color marker throughout the card to make everything mesh and kind of gel together 
for our design. Now I have colored the little spots on the octopus's head and then I've also gone and added a simple line down the bottom side of each of his tentacles and then colored in the fish. Next I'm using a blue green and I'm using this marker over the top of the whole octopus and then using it on the windows of the ship. So again we're going to tie all of our colors all together. Okay, moving on with those party colors. So now I'm doing yellow. You can choose any color yellow you like. Uh, spreading that color out through the balloon, the little gifts up there in the crow's nest, the pirate's clothing, and then the parrot off to the right side as well. So again, the parrot, the same red. You can see all of those same markers that I've used over there on the side. Now I did pull in some grays for the anchor and then the same color grays up for that big mast in or the big sail there in the middle of the pirate ship. Okay, once all of the coloring is all finished, so I have it all finished, everything is done, everything coordinates with uh, everything else, I've taken the sentiment, happy birthday to you, and I'm going to stamp it directly onto that large sail, just using the same uh, Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I stamped that several times because of that being a new stamp. Now, before I use the coordinating dies to cut all of these cute little images out, I took my heat tool and dried that well. I can trim my dies apart with my little uh, die uh, snips and then line those up and use some easy C or highlighter tape to hold those into place and then I'll run all these through my die machine. Now it is time for all of our hard work to go together and I'm going to start building up all my little pieces. So I have my cloudy background and I can kind of decide here where I uh, want everything to sit. So I have my wavy lines water piece. I have the craft cardstock down there on the bottom. And remember, all of these were cut with that slim line die collection. So they all have the really cute stitched and scalloped edge. And then the water piece and the sandy piece have the stitched edge on the top, top. So everything is going to flow and all coordinate together. Now, this is one other way that you could do this. You could add your craft cardstock up to the top part of the water and have it be like an island up there. So you can play around with all of these paper pieces to create the scene that you want. Now, to add just a little bit of something to that. That craft cardstock. I'm using some brown markers. These are the same brown Copic markers that I use to color in the browns on the ship. I'm just adding some little dots here and there to mimic the look of sand. And you just barely want to place the very tip of that marker down onto the paper. That way you don't get any big uh, splotches and blotches here and there, but just the very, very tip. Now I did go ahead and place my cute little octopus down and the anchor because I wanted to add some of the cute little sandy dots right around those. So I went ahead and added those down onto the water piece. And now I can add adhesive onto the back of the water and the sandy piece. Now I'm gonna add it around the bottom but not put a lot of adhesive up towards the top. I want to leave a little place, a little pocket, if you will, open to be able to slip my cute little pirate ship down into the top of the water so it looks like you know it's kind of floating down in the water. I am going to pop this up with some foam dots just to add a little bit of dimension to the card. I can pull off the backers here and then again I'm going to slip the bottom of that pirate ship down into the little space that I left open inside the water. Now if you want to add some fun little details, you can take a metallic paint pen. I'm taking a silver here. 
the anchor I added some metallic silver to, to the looking glass that the pirate has I'm adding silver to, and also the sword or knife or whatever that uh, weapon is that the other little pirate is holding. I need to study up on my ship and pirate terminology, obviously. But you can add some metallic pieces to that. Also, it's really cute added to the little treasure chests as well, and it adds just a little bit of shine and sparkle. You can also go through your images and add a little bit of white gel pen. You can see I've got that scrap piece of paper there off to the side that I start all of my uh, white gel pen, black gel pen, and my paint pens onto before I take it to my card design. That way I don't run the risk of uh, any of that paint or ink kind of oozing out onto my hard work. Now I'm going to pop this whole scalloped uh, slimline panel up on the front of a red card base and again we're just tying all those colors together and you can see the red card base right around the edges of all those cute little scallops and then this card is almost all done it wouldn't be all finished without a little bit of bubbles here and there and I'm using these super cute kind of iridescent little gems um, Trinity Stamps has the best embellishments ever and so I'm using these cute little gems and I'm going to place those around the front and the back of the ship, almost like the bubbles and the foam and the waves are kind of crashing up against the ship. And then also down around the anchor and the octopus. Okay, so here is a look at the finished Party Pirates card. This was so much fun to color and put together. Make sure you check out the whole birthday release. And thank you so much to Trinity Stamps for having me to celebrate your fifth birthday. Congratulations. And check out all these products and many more at trinitystamps.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.